Welcome to the Brethren of the Morning Star YouTube channel. I'm your host, Magister Cankerworm. My topic for today is tips for how diabolists and theistic Satanists can get the most out of their prayer life. I'm not going to spend much time presenting arguments that prayer should be a part of your spiritual practice. To my mind, if you call yourself a theistic Satanist, or a diabolist especially, you already understand and accept that some amount of prayer should be part of your practice. If Satan and Lilith and the daemons are real entities and your religion revolves around them, you should be in communication with them. Prayer is the simplest way to do that on a daily basis. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. Point number one, do it. That's my first tip. The best way to get the most out of your prayer life is to pray, and pray with regularity. There are a number of reasons people put off committing to a prayer practice. Some feel self-conscious and silly doing it. Some have bad associations with prayer because of the religion they are coming out of previously. Some people think they don't know how to pray. Some people think they are too busy. I can assure you, whatever reason is holding you back, the best way to move past it is to just start praying. Like starting an exercise regimen or learning to play an instrument, you have to start where you are at and trust you will navigate the learning curve as you progress. If you're serious about your faith, you'll move past whatever excuses are holding you back. Point number two, set aside a specific time and place to pray. I like to pray in the morning uh, upon first waking and generally again in the evening. This way, my day is bookended by spending time in communion with my infernal Lord and Lady. Those times may not work for you. If you would rather pray once a day at lunch, do it. Find what works and stick with that. The important part is committing to a scheduled time. That's how prayer becomes a habit. Along with keeping to a specific time, it is generally best to pray in the same location as well. Obviously, there will be times when this will not be possible, but generally, pray at your altar. That's where you should be doing the bulk of your magical work anyway. This will not only help you stick to your prayer schedule, but will reinforce that your altar is a set-aside place where spiritual powers are encountered. Tip number three. It's okay to use prayers other people have written. As a child, the church my mother attended was Southern Baptist. If anyone is familiar with the history of the Baptist denomination, you will know that one of the practices Baptists were breaking away from was the use of pre-written prayers. The idea was that using the prayers of others was just disingenuous. They believed you should only pray from the heart, in the moment, with only the Holy Ghost as your guide. I honestly don't know if there are theistic Satanists who feel the same way, but if so, I'm just going to say it flat out, you're wrong. First off, everyone falls into liturgies or prayer habits, whether they be of their own or another's devising. I can assure you, if you attend enough Baptist services, you'll eventually begin to notice that a lot of these, quote, in the moment prayers from the heart sound an awful lot alike and that the same people tend to favor the same phrases and structures of prayer continually. Most of us can't pull out a meaningful and inspiring prayer at a moment's notice. So if your prayers are going to become formulaic, whether you want them to or not, and I assure you they will, why not take the time beforehand to make sure the words you are praying are the most inspiring, enlightening, and beautiful ones you can find? Can you write your own prayers? Absolutely. But don't be afraid to use those others have written if they truly speak to you. Part of the reason I wrote the Book of Infernal Prayer in the first place was to give people who maybe weren't great at writing prayers a resource that was both moving and theologically revealing. You don't have to use the prayers I have written, of course. There are other resources out there. Read through them. Find what speaks to you. And most importantly, pray those prayers regularly. Tip number four, use visualization. This tip alone will take your prayer practice to new levels. Prayer isn't speaking words into the void, hoping something is listening on the other end. 
Prayer is a magical tool. And like any form of magic, visualization is required to get the most out of it. Every day, sometimes multiple times a day, I give what I call the Diabolist's Prayer. I have very specific visuals I hold in my mind when I give that prayer. As I begin with the words, Send forth your light, O Satan. I imagine Satan standing behind me, his rays shooting outward, revealing a path ahead. I hold this image until I come to the line, and that I may be prepared for all this, inflame my heart with the fire of your will. At this point, I imagine my heart engulfed by a raging dark fire that empowers me to walk that path. Likewise, when I pray to Lilith, I often imagine her standing over me, radiating strength and power. Hail Lilith, proud and free, as a prayer in the Brethren of the Morning Star goes. The above is easiest with pre-prepared prayers that you pray on a regular basis. That way you can pick out or develop over time what images or sensations work best with what. But even if you're giving an off-the-cuff prayer, there are still general visualizations you can use. Feel energy going out from you. Feel energy coming into you. Surround yourself in an aura of color. Imagine yourself transforming into a beast that possesses the qualities you are wanting to invoke. Use your creativity, figure out what works for you, and incorporate that into your practice. To me, this is what Aleister Crowley meant when he said, inflame yourself in prayer. That is, we pour our being into the practice, not letting it merely be vain and empty words. Tip number five, don't let your prayers become Dear Santa lists. If the majority of your prayer time is a laundry list of things you want the powers of hell to do for you, then you have lost the thread of what Satanism is about somewhere along the way. Satan and Lilith want you to be strong. They want you to learn. Our Lord and Lady want you to grow. What they do not want is for you to ask them to do all the work for you. This is another strength of using pre-written prayers. You won't default into spending your time talking to Lucifer and Babylon about all the wonderful things they can do for you. Does this mean you can never ask them for help? Of course not. Consider, though, the difference in asking hell to do something for you unilaterally and for hell to give you the support or point you in the right direction so you can make things happen for yourself. What should the majority of your prayers be about? Giving thanks when help is received is important. But even more is celebrating the qualities of Lilith and Satan that likely drew you to them in the first place. This is generally known as praise. The point of praise isn't to feed the devil's ego. We are not talking about Jehovah here. Truthfully, praise is primarily about catechizing yourself. If you spend the majority of your prayer time enumerating all the things that makes Satan and Lilith so amazing, every day you will be reinforcing to yourself the types of qualities that you should be seeking to emulate in your own life. The literal meaning of worship is to assign worth to something. That's what hymns and prayers of praise do. They make explicit what about our God and Goddess is worthy of worship in the first place. And if you do that enough, it will begin to change the things you value in your own life. Praising Satan every day for his wisdom and fortitude, Lilith for her courage and strength, and Cain for his sense of self-preservation will, over time, change how you interact with the world. This is probably the greatest value in prayer for diabolists. It won't happen overnight. It takes dedication and perseverance. But I promise you, if you are persistent, in praising all the things that make our Lord and Lady noble and holy day in and day out, it will leave a mark on your soul. Even if Lilith and Satan never lift a finger to help you, though they will, this practice alone will help you transform your life. Tip number six, don't overdo it. Brother Nero, who hosts the Shadow Path Diabolism podcast, once said you should only be praying once a day, twice a day at most. I agree with him. Satanism isn't about spending your life 
navel-gazing, or making sure a moment never passes without someone saying something flowery and great about the infernal kingdom. It's about living your life. Prayer should aid you in that pursuit, not consume it. How much you should pray is a subjective question. I would say, generally speaking, 15 to 30 minutes a day is perfectly sufficient. There may be special circumstances when you want to go beyond that, perhaps to prepare for a specific ritual or because you are in a time of great need and uncertainty, but that is the exception, not the rule. Satan wants witches and warlocks, not monks and nuns. Finally, tip number seven, incorporate listening into your prayer. Prayer shouldn't be a one-sided conversation. Silent prayer otherwise known as contemplative prayer, is a way of giving Lucifer and Lilith a chance to speak to you. After all, communion is a two-way street. There are different ways to do this. You should experiment and see what works for you. For some, a prayer of invocation, followed by a few minutes of expectant silence, is enough. For others, they, get, they might get more out of visualizing the devil in their mind's eye and rolling with it if the image suddenly takes on a life of its own. You can put on some music and offer a dance up to Lilith. You may be surprised by what swells up within you while you're moving your body. Pick a tarot card and spend some time meditating on it, trying to figure out just what message the devil is communicating to you. Be creative. It's your spiritual life, and only you know what works best for you. Those are my seven prayer tips for diabolists and theistic Satanists. I wanted to make this video because it's been my experience that prayer, while subtle and deceptive in its simplicity, can be one of the most powerful spiritual tools a diabolist has in their toolkit. Grand witch rituals once a month or a couple times a year can be transformative, but their power is nothing compared to the spiritual practices you do every single day. So, make your way to your altar, offer up your voice to your infernal lord and lady, and start a practice that will remain with you for the rest of your life.